Okay, my story sure, is mythic yeah. material. And you know what? You know, just, just to the critics out there, your story's mythic material too. Uh -huh. yeah. Because none of you could write the story of your own life and have it conform to academic standards of being history. But you know that it happened. You asked the second question about, you know, is, is everything, you know, like these historical events, you know, are they true? I think they absolutely, absolutely are true. But they get told in, in a number of senses in mythic ways, okay? And, and I'm not one, like I said earlier, I don't, I don't separate myth and history. I don't think if you tell something mythically, it's untrue. Let me illustrate what I mean. Academically speaking, myth, a myth as a genre is a story that's told where you have supernatural characters. Okay. God, angels, demons, Satan. Okay. So by definition, the Bible, you know, some of its content is myth because it has supernatural actors. Okay. Well, I get it. But people will take that, especially, you know, academics, professors who, who hate scripture. And they can't wait to get Christians in their classes, uh, okay? Because they'll use this idea, and at first it sounds innocent. Oh, it's just a story with supernatural characters. Well, of course the Bible's myth. And then they'll, then they'll proceed to, to get to convince them that if it's myth genre, it can't be true. Right, right. Right, so they'll go down this road. Let me illustrate how that breaks down. It, I could tell you the story, and since you were part of it, you're going to know your side, and then I, I could in interject my side, but how I came to Celebration Church. I could tell you the story of how I got my job at Logos Bible Software in 2004. I can give you all the details. And then when I try to tell you the story of how I think that God was in those details, okay, I'm doing myth. I'm theologizing events. Ah. I'm making God part of the story. And I'll, I'll just relate part of it as, as far as my Logos job. So in 2004, I had a few months to go to be done with my doctoral program. I had been applying for jobs for almost five years, as you get five years from your dissertation. And I had one interview that ended catastrophically. <laughs> Providentially, it was, I'm so glad it did. <laughs> but but it, it, was, it just was bad. But I had good degrees. I had taught 20 courses. You know, I, I, you know, I had a really good resume. You know, I, I had a, an Ivy League degree. I mean, I, I thought I should get a job. I didn't even get an interview. So I'm really kind of low. I've got a couple months and I've, I've managed to cobble together. I, I went to school, it took me 15 years to get through. I worked full time the whole time, four or five jobs at a time. It just, it was crazy, okay? So I know in two or three months, my main job, my TA ship is gonna disappear because I'm, I'm done. With that goes my benefits and I have no prospects at all. So I'm driving home one day and I get home and it's the middle of the month. How do I know it's the middle of the month? Because the chronology here is important. So it's the middle of the month and I, there's nobody home and I, I walked into our bedroom and I sat down at the computer and I'm talking to myself while I'm doing this like, you know, don't check the job boards again. You know they only update on the first week of every month. It's been this way for five years. Why are you doing this? And it's like, oh, I don't even know, I don't know what else to do. So I'm clicking away at the keyboard and I'm gonna go look at the Society of Biblical Literature job board knowing that it's gonna look the same way it did two weeks ago. So I go up, screen pops up, and lo and behold, for the first time in five years, <laughs> there's something new in the middle of the month. And I thought, well, that's odd. And I read it, and it was this job for a software company that you know, was an academic job, but it wasn't teaching. It was, you know, come and help us do academic products. And I thought, well, that sounds kind of interesting. You know, I, why not? So I had everything done. You know, I mean, I've been sending resumes out. So I an email, there it goes. Half an hour later, I get a phone call. My wife comes home by, by this time. You know, what are you doing? Oh, you know, same thing I do all the time. I get this phone call and it's a guy, at the software company, that turns into a conference call. And I'm on the phone for an hour with these people. At the end of which the guy says, 
well, why don't we, you know, we'll fly you out here and you'll, you know, interview for the job and, you know, we'll get to know you. And, and I'm thinking, well, well, why not? You know, it, it's a vacation, two or three days sure, in Washington, yeah. why not? You know, and I'm not thinking anything at this point. So to shorten the story, I went out, we interviewed, there were three people in the department. I met them all, we had dinner, you know, did the whole job interview schmooze, you know, the whole thing. And at the end of it, I expected to hear, well, you know, it was fun to meet you. You know, we got to talk about you in a couple of weeks. You know, we'll get back to you and blah, 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 blah. So I walk into the CEO's office and he says, well, we've decided to offer you the job. And I didn't know what to do. It's like, really? Like, you're, you're kidding. You know, like, I, I didn't know what to do. I found out years later that when they posted the job, it had only been on the site for about 10, 15 minutes to when they got my resume. So literally when I was, right, what a coincidence. <laughs> when I was driving home from school that day, the job literally didn't exist. By the time I hit my house, it did exist. I sat down oh. and I couldn't talk myself out of doing it. There it is, I applied, they, they said, you were the only one that we looked at, you're the only person we interviewed, and we had you out and you know the rest of the story. Now I can tell you all of those facts and I can suggest to you, and I will suggest rather strongly, that God was in that. Yes. What I've just done is I've taken historical data points. All these things happen. They're even time stamped because it's email, you know, everything's real here. But I've taken the story and I'm attributing God's hand to it. I'm theologizing history. I'm mythicizing it. Wow. Does that mean yeah, yeah. that the story is not true? Further, I don't have other eyewitnesses, even my wife. I could have just been making up the phone call. She, she wasn't on the call. She doesn't know that I talked to Bill yeah, and Bob yeah. and Dale. She doesn't know any of this. I don't have corroborating witnesses. I don't have like things written down and footnoted and notarized and validated. I don't have alternate sources. I don't have all the things that professional historians would insist I must have uh, to tell a true story. I don't have any of that, but you know what? I was there, okay, I was there, and you bet I'm gonna theologize that story. Yes, of So course. this is what scripture does. Okay, there are things that happen in real time. Yes, they get written a lot later. Yes, the writers see the hand of God in events but that doesn't invalidate them as having real-time validity and factuality. These are faithful accounts of things that happened, and it's telling a story of God's hand in these things that happened. It doesn't conform in any way to the way we would do history, or we certainly wouldn't have God as a character because that's just mythic material. Sorry, okay, my story, Sure, is mythic yeah. material. And you know what? You know, just, just to the critics out there, your story is mythic material too. Uh -huh. yeah. Because none of you could write the story of your own life and have it conform to academic standards of being history. But you know that it happened. Uh, you know it happened. Yeah. And if you're a believer, if you, even if you're not a Christian, even if you just believe in, in a God, you know, you know that there are things about your life story that you just, you didn't control. You couldn't control, you couldn't have manipulated them. You know, and you can be thankful, you know, for, for this or that, how just things just came together. So yeah, you have, a, you have a choice to make. It's either all coincidence or there's a hand in it. And as soon as you move from coincidence to hand, guess what, fella, you're doing mythic history. That's so, that's so good.